Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 4th of April. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. But happy 50th birthday, Microsoft. Uh, as part of that 50th anniversary, they've got this big AI skills fest. I think it's 50 days of AI learning. I'll put the link in the description below. They also have a 24 hour learning event. I think they're trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records for the biggest online learning event. So also go ahead and take a look at that. So exciting stuff. So on to what's new, new videos. I did the VM and VM scale set, part of the updated Azure Masterclass. And then an April Fool's joke, uh, I did a sponsored video that was supposed to be very subtle, but obviously it wasn't because it was an April Fool's video, but I still do go over how to create a new virtual network. On to what's actually new. So there's a whole bunch of retirements. There's so many retirements, I can't cover them all today. You'll obviously get service health alerts and the retirement workbook will show you those. So I'm gonna cover some of the biggest ones. So if I'm running AKS on Windows Server 2019 or 2022, that's retiring or Azure Local 22H2. So you need to move to Azure Local 23H2 or later if you wanna keep running AKS on those environments. Also, some of the very older SKUs, so the D, the DS, the DV2, the DSV2, the LS initial series, they're all retiring uh, end of May, 2028. Remember, generally you wanna try and stay on the newer SKUs anyway, because the newer SKUs give a much better price performance ratio. So I don't really wanna be running on a SKU that's five generations behind. So take a look at where the newer SKUs are available. Hopefully we're using infrastructure as code and DevOps to roll these things out. So you do wanna try and stay pretty current anyway, but definitely you need to get off of those in the next three years. AKS now has auto instrumentation in preview for my Java and Node microservices. So what this means is instead of me having to change my code, if I have my Java and Node microservices running on AKS, I can just automatically hook those in into Azure App Insights. Now it has to be running on Linux node pools, but all it's gonna do is via the nodes and the Java libraries in my code, it's gonna send the application logs, the metrics, even distributed tracing to your App Insights instance. You can then go and get the various information about it. AKS Cilium powered CNI overlay is now dual stack in GA. So remember the overlay is where I can have a separate IP space for my pods from that of the nodes they run on that. It gives me a more efficient use of my IP space. So if I am now using the Cilium data plane and I'm using the CNI overlay, I can now do that dual stack. Often the Cilium data plane is used because I can use the Cilium network policy engine. That gives me a lot of flexibility for both pod to pod, pod to service, even layer seven communications. I get really good observability. And so now, hey, I can go ahead, use the preferred overlay method and still get dual stack with IPv4 and IPv6. Talking of Cilium, there's also now support for WinGuard encryption that it can use for the node-to-node -node communications. And also with the Cilium and the advanced container network services, it's now got layer seven network policies. So now for my app level traffic, I can have security rules based on the application layer attributes making it easier for things like zero trust for those app services. AKS Communication Manager has gone GA. This is aimed at my AKS maintenance task notifications. And it's hooking into the standard Azure Control Plane alerting capability. So as part of my upgrade activities for my cluster, it can notify me of failures or issues. And what this lets me do is my regular Azure alert rules what I can now do is for the source, I can do a custom log search, which is given in the documentation that will surface these notifications. And then through that alert rule, I can then trigger action groups or anything else I would normally do. AKS now supports Azure Linux 3 in GA. That's gonna be the standard for AKS 1.32 and above clusters anyway. And Kubernetes Fleet Manager now has multi-cluster auto upgrade in GA. So remember, 
The whole point of the Azure Kubernetes Fleet Manager is it provides at scale management of all the different AKS clusters I have that may span regions, they span subscriptions, but they're all set within the same tenant still. So what this will let me do is Fleet Manager can now trigger multiple different AKS clusters to perform those automatic upgrades, but it's doing it in an orchestrated manner. It's not just, hey, go and upgrade. Because I may want to respect certain uh, rings. I may want to maintain a certain amount of availability and performance of my services. It's still going to respect the cluster maintenance windows they have, but it's going to happen within my particular order that I specify. It also now supports multi-cluster workload upgrade strategies. So my workloads running on the cluster, I can control which clusters will receive the placements based on those stages that I define. And using labels on my clusters, I can assign specific clusters to specific stages, which will control how my workload actually rolls out. And there's also in preview, a disruption budget for my workloads. So that will control well, how many different clusters can be evicted for a particular workload as part of my overall rollout to ensure I maintain a certain level of availability. So quite a lot of nice uh, fleet manager things there. AKS now has its cost recommendations in GA. So this is via Azure Advisor and its cost recommendations. It can now help you right size the SKUs you're using for nodes, right size the clusters themselves, the node pools, maybe pick a different SKU selection, auto scale settings, and a whole bunch more. The AKS network isolated clusters has gone GA as well. So ordinarily, there's a certain number of fully qualified domain names, DNS names, that your AKS cluster has to talk to for its maintenance. Think Kubernetes updates, think node image updates. And if I wanted to control that in the past, I would have to use something like Azure Firewall, which at the layer seven would let me control access to only certain fully qualified domain names, but I'd have to pay for that Azure Firewall. What this solution does instead is I now have my own Azure Container Registry, it's my resource. From that instance, I have a private endpoint into my virtual network. And then that Azure Container Registry will act as a cache for artifacts from the public Microsoft Artifact Registry. So think of the images and the binaries required to keep my AKS cluster updated will now be basically being transported through via a private Azure Container Registry. And that can be Microsoft managed or I can bring my own, but it removes the need to have any internet connectivity. And of course, Azure Control Plane, I can do private clusters and other VNet integrations as well. AKS AI Toolchain now uses the VLLM in preview. So that AI Toolchain operator add-on, when I want to have my model inferencing workloads, it will now use that VLLM servicing engine. And this is really good for the speed. So as I get those requests, it's much more performant than the other engine that it used in the past. And I can use it for the OpenAI compatible APIs. I can use it for the DeepSeq R1 models and various hugging face models as well. AKS now has a max unavailable setting in preview that's gonna be used as part of my node pool upgrades. So this will be used for both node image and the Kubernetes. And it's gonna control how many nodes can be cordoned off and drained so the pod workloads are removed as part of a rolling upgrade effort. So I might say, hey, I only want two nodes at a time to be drained of the pods, upgraded, replace the image, Kubernetes in place. Once they're done, then it moves on to the next two and the next two. That ensures you always have a certain number of nodes available to serve the workloads, to have a certain amount of reliability, a certain amount of capacity. So this will be used instead of the previous max search, which you can still use, you pick one or the other, which will add additional nodes as part of upgrade cycles to maintain a certain amount of capacity. So you can pick which one you want to do. AKS now has standard load balancer health probe redesign and also multi standard load balancer support. So the redesign is it will now queue probe the queue proxy directly instead of the backend application but it also now will support multiple instances of the standard load balancer per cluster. That's really useful if I was hitting maybe raw limits on the standard load balancer, 
maybe private link constraints of a single instance, I, I'm now not going to be bound by those anymore. Additionally, AKS now lets me use both IP ranges and service tags for my service load balancers. So if in the past you thought about, well, I would have to control access to my load balancer by sets of IP addresses. Well, now instead of that, I can actually use the Microsoft provided service tags that represent all of the IPs for a certain service. So instead of having to try and manage a whole bunch of IPs for Azure Front Door, I could now say, hey, I want to let Azure Front Door come in and talk to my load balancer. So I can really simplify your management. And AKS now has persistent network flow logging in preview. So that's part of the advanced container network services. And what this lets me do is capture and retain the detailed network traffic logs over time. And with those logs, I can then get insights into the behavior of things talking over on my network. I can help check the security of my network and just my overall efficiency. On the networking side, so point to site VPN manual registered clients that are using entry authentication. This is being retired uh, end of March 2028. I need to move to the Microsoft registered VPN client. So you've got three years, but you need to go and migrate away from that. And then ExpressRoute has a whole bunch of resiliency enhancements in preview. So the first lets me now actually simulate a circuit failure. So for my virtual network gateway, my VNet, to help ensure I've configured the right resiliency, so I have multiple connections to different circuits on different peering points, I can simulate a failure in one of them to ensure the gateway falls over to another circuit on another peering location and my connectivity continues. It also now has insights, which will provide a really nice view of my gateway show me the routes available, and it actually gives me a resiliency score percentage. So I can understand, well, how good is my express route resiliency and give me things that I should go and focus on to actually improve it. App Gateway for Containers now has overlay support. So the CNI overlay. Remember, App Gateway for Containers, this is the built for AKS solution. Although it's got App Gateway in the name, it's not part of the regular app gateway. It's actually a separate solution built specifically for AKS. Well, now that supports the CNI overlay, which we talked about before, that lets me have a separate IP space for the pods from the nodes. It does also work for the legacy app gateway ingress controller that works with the regular app gateway, but ideally we're trying to move more and more to the AKS native app gateway for containers solution. And this is a pretty interesting one high scale private endpoints. So if private endpoints give me an IP address in my VNet that's for a specific resource, it could be a, a Microsoft service, or it could be saying I'm hosting myself behind a private link service. Previously, I could have 1000 private endpoints in a specific virtual network and 4000 over a whole set of peered virtual networks. High scale supports 5000 private endpoints per VNet and 20,000 over the sum of all the peered VNets. It's only in certain regions today, but certainly if you're in one of those scenarios where I need that much higher amount of private endpoints, that's gonna be an attractive option to you. On the storage side, so AZAC Snap 11 has gone GA. Remember this solution helps me create app consistent snapshots of database that use uh, ANF, Azure NetApp files. Works on Windows and Linux, and it now supports SQL Server 2022 on Windows. And there's a bunch of other fixes and improvements as well. The Azure File Sync Managed Identity Support has gone GA. So remember, Azure File Sync, the point of this is I have a cloud endpoint, so an Azure file share, then I have n number of Windows file servers. And what they will do is they synchronize via that cloud endpoint. They don't talk to each other, they talk via that cloud endpoint. Well, there's a whole bunch of different services that have to authenticate to that Azure File Share and the synchronization service. And what this now lets me do is instead of having to maintain a shared key for that authentication, it will use the managed identity of those Windows File Share. So it can be used for the storage sync service authentication to the Azure File Share. It's also the registered server authentication to the Azure File Share. 
and the registered server authentication to the storage sync service. Now, because it's a managed identity, obviously that means these have to be Azure Arc enabled if it's outside of Azure. So if it's not a Azure VM running the Windows file share that I want to be part of this Azure file sync group, if it's outside of that, I need to Arc enable it because it's Arc that would let me get a system assigned managed identity, which is required for this. On the database side, so the auto scale, I think we've covered this before, but the auto scale for the vCore MongoDB on Cosmos DB has gone GA. So this lets me basically now, for the only for the M200 tier today, it lets me spike up to a higher capacity instantly. There's no ramp up time, it's just there. I don't have to manually scale anymore. Now it has a 50% price premium, but based on the frequency of the spikes, that would still save you money than having to just constantly over provision to handle those various spikes that you have. So that's now an option available, a tier that you can select. Miscellaneous, so the Microsoft DevBox is now available in the new region, Spain Central. Remember, Microsoft DevBox is a pre-configured remote workstation that comes ready to code. There's different types of SKU, different types of tool sets available. I can use my own images if I want to, but it's designed so a developer can just go there and they are ready to go. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Go and celebrate the 50th birthday. But until next video, take care.